Huh? You and I both know that the road is littered with the carcasses of marriages that didn't make it. Right. When a celebrity breaks through and manages mm -hmm. to stay at the top. How have you done it? It wasn't up to me. It was uh, strictly up to her. She just was strong. She's been out here on the road with us uh, for the last four or five years now. She used to come when she could. She raised great babies, and um, we had a wonderful, uh, we got wonderful children. They're all three. My son's a, uh, getting ready to be a senior in college. He's the, he's the baby, so he's the last of the, he's the last of my tribe. And uh, she enjoys, she enjoys uh, coming and hanging out. I've got some really close friends of mine that are uh, singers. S some of my favorite nights are like when uh, me and Sammy Hagar and a couple more and their wives are all out. We're all jamming, having fun in Mexico and everybody's standing around your family and everybody's partying. You can't get that perfect thing to work unless everybody's sold in from the start. You know, there's gonna be highs and lows, but at the end of the day, uh, you're either supposed to be together or you're not. But it's one thing to get to the top. It's another thing to stay at the top as long as you have. Mm -hmm. And not just as a singer, performer, songwriter, but businessman, entrepreneur, what is the key to your having done that? What's inside you that made you do that? Uh, work ethic. My, my dad, I'm from Oklahoma. You've been to my ranch. Yeah. And uh, that's the work ethic that was put in. It was like, they might outright us, they might outsing us, and they might outplay us, and they might outsell us, but they can't outwork us. And if you work every day of your life, you'll get luckier and you'll be more productive. And I just, um, I just put my nose to grindstone and and had a lot of luck and a great fan base and and I'm here. You mentioned before, should have been a cowboy is what broke you through. That was your breakover. How and why did you write it? How did that come about? Um, I had just got, um, I was trying to get a record deal and I'd just been turned down by Capitol in Nashville. Very, very famous. Rat Pack producer, the guy who produced the Rat Pack, Jimmy Bowen, had just turned me down and said, his company had Capital and Nashville had said, um, you're, you, we've already got um, Garth Brooks and we're not looking for a male artist and your songwriting, you need to go back to Woodshed. And I had just written that song in 20 minutes about two months before on the side of a bathtub in Dodge City, Kansas. I went pheasant hunting with about 20 guys. One of them was a highway patrolman. And, and we went into this Western saloon and this dude was about my age now. And he was in hunt clothes and this young girl standing at the bar, he gets up from his stake and he said, I think I'm gonna go dance with her. And they're like, John, she ain't gonna dance with you. You're in hunting clothes and you stink. You've been in the field all day. No, watch this. She turns him down. A little bit later, a young guy comes in and she's right on the floor and somebody goes, John, you should have been a cowboy. <laughs> and I went, ding, 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 ding. I was like, oh, I got that. So we were staying in this little motel and we're staying two to a room, somebody had leased the room. And I went in and my guy that was uh, staying in my room went to bed and I didn't want to wake him, but I brought a guitar. And so I grab it, go in the bathroom, sit on the side of that little shower bathtub combo and in 20 minutes, I wrote it. Here for my horses. Unusual uh, title to say the mm -hmm. least. You were actually in the movie, Beer for My Horses. Uh, for your listeners or your viewers, uh, me and Willie and Rodney Carrington and David Allen Coe and uh, uh, got a lot of people's in that movie. Claire Filani, uh, it was a bunch of movies. Anyway, we shot this movie and they said we need a, uh, we need somebody to do the TV announcement at the end in the bar. And I said, call Dan Rather, and you did it. <laughs> it was awesome. Manuel Garza, the strong arm leader of one of Mexico's largest drug cartels, was incarcerated earlier today in Oklahoma City. I go, we can't get Dan Rather to do that. I go, call him. That's the way I got Burt Reynolds to do the first movie I was in. I said, call him. And he said, yeah, but I thank you for doing that. It was, on, oh, it was my nice pleasure. to have you. Anyway, I worked for a rodeo company in high school, and there was a real old elderly gentleman that betted the stock down at night. And we were kids, 
12, 13, 15 years old, and he kept a pint of Old Crow whiskey in his back pocket. And every night when we'd get the stock bedded down, he would say, you boys want to drink off my bottle? And sometimes we would, sometimes we would, because we really didn't want to drink after him, you know. <laughs> Especially Chewing. Old Crow. Yeah, and, oh, especially <laughs> Old Crow. He had any teeth, and and uh, and he had to back all over, and that whiskey, and we're like, uh, so he would hold it up and go, turn out the lights, you know, uh, whiskey from my man bearing my horses. So I just put that in my back pocket and saved it. I thought it was comical. I thought it was profound, and. It was like a million other songs we started to write that just turned out to where I said, it's so old West that I want Willie Nelson to sing part of it. And I took it to him and he said, send it to me. And I said, okay. He goes, what's the name of it? And I said, it's called Beer for My Horses. It's whiskey for my men, beer for my horses. And he said, I don't even need to hear it, I'm in. <laughs> and that's six week number one. Well, the song did very well. The movie, probably because of my brief appearance, it did not do so well. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of reasons for people to hate on that movie, but it's hilarious. The movie's funny, and Rodney Carrington's funny, and me and Rodney wrote it. And so to go out and be a songwriter from Oklahoma, oil field worker, and decide you're going to write a whole movie and get all the people involved that we got, Tom Skerritt, everybody involved, we got involved, and do the movie and finish it, it was a complete joy. And at the end of the day, me and Rodney had a blast and the people that have watched it, that are fans of mine said they loved it and they laughed and we had a great time doing it and I wouldn't take it back for nothing. Even if it didn't win an Oscar? Yeah. Or my recollection, it may not even got nominated. Did it not get nominated, Dan? <laughs> I'll be damned. <laughs> See, I thought we were going to Hollywood. <laughs> Weed with Willie, as yeah. in Willie Nelson. Yeah, yeah as in smoking weed with wood. Yeah. How'd that come about? Uh, weed's never been my high. Uh, I can't handle my high when I do weed. I'm not very much fun. I'd rather drink. But um, I was at the old Hacienda in Vegas and Charles Barkley had a birthday party at the Rum Jungle at midnight. Eight o'clock, Willie's at the Hacienda. So I said, I'm gonna go by at eight, see Willie plenty of time to get over to Charles, and I ain't got to work till tomorrow night. So I get on stage, do a couple songs with Willie, shake his hand, hug him, wave at his audience, and do, maybe we did beer for my horses. I don't remember, but anyway, we did a couple songs. He goes, don't leave, don't leave yet. I'm gonna talk to you. So I thought, okay. So I go to his bus, and he fires a joint up. And he says, uh, here we go. I said, you got some whiskey? Yep. I said, okay, and I thought, you know what? If I'm gonna smoke, smoke weed, it's gonna be with him. Went in Rome, and I absolutely wanna be able to tell my friends and my family and my people that I smoked a joint Willie Nelson. And smoking weed on Willie's bus is almost obligatory. Yeah, and also it's like really chronic. It's like toxic, industrial strength. So I tried to do the old, fake it a little bit, and then finally I went, you know what, let's go. And about an hour later, I was just zombied. And I felt the bus rolling, and I got up and I said, uh, Willie, the bus is rolling. He goes, you going with us? I go, no, I got a show tomorrow. I got to roll. He goes, well, good time, get off. You know, I'll see you next time. So I get off, and I missed Charles Barkley's birthday, and I went home, went to my room, and I crashed out and I woke up next morning, I had all these text messages and emails. Where'd you go last night? Barkley was mad, everybody, what'd you do? And I said, I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. And even though that isn't true, um, I, I wrote a great song from it. So the song resulted from uh, too powerful of weed on Willie's bus. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and maybe the people that smoke every day, maybe they can, handle it like he does because he's he's just like drinking water he can just go all day but if you're out of smoking shape and you don't do you know if that ain't your high it'll sneak up on you and and i turn into the what is it walking dead 